What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we are at an empty mall parking lot. And what are we doing here? I'm gonna be showing you guys everything that I keep in my car and why I have it in my car. You might be wondering, what's special about what I keep in my car? Well, I drive over 40,000 miles a year. Uh, I supercharge close to daily and I've driven this car cross country four times, including in Minnesota winter. I, I generally just keep a lot of things in my car to be very prepared. I also create a lot of content out of my car. So let's get started. All right, so first we're gonna start with the front trunk. Uh, since it's a Tesla, it does have a front trunk. There's no gas engine up here, so I have even more storage. So I have my tool bag here. I actually do some handyman work on the side. So I've got a variety of different hand tools. Uh, I've got my impact driver with a Phillips bit as well as a bunch of other bits in there. Um, there's not a whole lot of things that I can't assemble with the tools that I have in here. Uh, I do a lot of Ikea stuff, stuff through TaskRabbit, but obviously I'm not doing that right now with the whole outbreak and everything. Uh, I also keep my Segway by Ninebot Mini Pro up here. Uh, those of you that have watched some of my vlogs, you've seen this, but essentially this just slides in there, lock that down, pull it out, self-balancing, you hop on, it's just like that. You might ask, why do I have a Segway in my car? Well, one, it's fun and I enjoy riding it. But two, when you're supercharging, depending on where the supercharger is, if you wanna grab food or go to a store or something, uh, this can be a lot easier way to get places rather than having to walk. And it actually takes up hardly any space compared to like an e-bike or um, skateboard or anything like that. I know Kyle from Out of Spec Motoring, he carries a swag cycle in his car. That does take up quite a bit more space than this. And that doesn't fit in the front trunk. Um, and I really like that this fits in the front trunk since that's otherwise mostly unused space to me. All right, so while most of these tools are more suited to house type stuff, um, some of the tools are handy for car stuff as well. I keep a multimeter, uh, flashlight, the impact driver with different bits. So for small, like, roadside repairs this can also be handy I keep some pliers and things so that'll go with the tire plug kit that I keep in the trunk all right we've got the front shut let's head on back to the trunk I'll show you kind of some of the stuff that I keep in the actual trunk compartment itself let's just pull this out of the way for ease of viewing so I do have a tripod here um, I have a adapter that I use for putting my phone on it. If necessary, I'm gonna be using that to film my new 150,000 mile uh, review and one year ownership experience. Set that off to the side there. Here we have my DSLR camera bag. So we've got my Canon T3i, a couple lenses, flash. This is my phone uh, tripod mount, various filters, things like that. Nothing too crazy. Next, we've got my DJI Mavic Mini. Get that opened up here. Uh, for those that have watched my vlogs, you know that I actually lost the drone itself, but I do have another one on order. Um, this is just in the trunk for now, but obviously I can't really do a whole lot without having an actual drone itself. Uh, I do keep some extra shoes in my car. These have a little bit more grip than my Allbirds that I typically wear. I also don't care if these get dirty, which is nice in case I need to like uh, go into a dirt area. My Allbirds are kind of my everyday wear shoe. I really dig these. Uh, I keep two different jackets in my car. So this is a pretty light top layer, kind of a windbreaker. And then I also keep a Tesla Corp jacket. Uh, looks a little bit nicer and is also a little bit warmer than that windbreaker. This is just a beach towel in case I want to like lay in the uh, grass or anything like that. This is my Osprey uh, Daylight Plus. This is my everyday carry. This goes everywhere with me bag. Uh, I keep my uh, MacBook, uh, various things, kind of some computer accessories, all sorts of stuff in there. Basically everything I would need to leave my house this is what I carry it in. I keep multiple battery backups, uh, passport. It's my go bag. Little first aid kit, nothing too special. Um, figure it's always good to have, especially if you're going to remote areas and you might be hiking or anything like that. Pretty basic stuff, but 
still good to have in a car. Even if it's for someone else and not just for me. You never know. Down even further in that cabinet, we do have um, a power inverter. You never know when you might be able to, or when you might need to power something that only uses 110. This also has some USB as well. So handy to have, you never know when you might need it. Let's put some of that back in there. Uh, here we have some of my detailing supplies. So those that have watched my, how I keep my car clean, you'll see how I use some of these supplies. This is quick detailer, glass cleaner, car wash solution, uh, new quick detailer that I'm gonna be trying out. Uh, I'm curious to see how this does compared to this one. It seems a little bit nicer, it's definitely more expensive. Pack of Costco Ultra Plush Microfiber Towels. These are absolutely the best value microfibers you can buy. Uh, new pack of baby wipes if you don't keep baby wipes in your car and you spend a lot of time on the road I don't know what you're doing because these come in so handy uh, some nylon bungee straps you never know when you might need these to hold down the trunk or whatever uh, just to keep things in place if you have an oversized item these just are very handy to have in any car we've got uh, Lexol leather conditioner I do have some nitro gloves. Lint roller comes in handy, you never know. Paper towels. Uh, here we have Iron X, which is actually very good for fallout removal as well as wheel cleaning. You do have to be careful with this, but if used properly, it is fantastic. And here we have Shinetsu grease, which is what I use on my uh, door seals and window seals. This helps keep the car quiet as well as keep those seals in really good shape. So that is what we have for, um, or actually more gloves. That's what we have for detailing supplies. I'll put those back and then we're gonna go to the under trunk. All right, so I do keep a WeatherTech liner here as well as I have this plush carpet that I got. Uh, so I'll show you guys what's in the under trunk but then I'll actually turn the video off and pull everything out just to make it a little easier. But here you can kind of see some of the stuff. So let me just get this pulled out and we'll go from there. All right, was able to get that kind of wedged up there so it stays in place for the moment while I film this. So let's start with some of my charging equipment. So this is Tesla bundle number one, that's sliding. So we've got a uh, 520 adapter. So this allows you to charge even faster on 110 than you normally would be able to. This is a 1030 adapter, so for pre-1996 build dryer outlets. Normal 110, uh, norm, known as a NEMA 515 adapter. We've got a NEMA 6-50 adapter, so that's commonly found in uh, welder outlets. The reason I keep this is if you're in kind of rural America, you're more likely to find this in like a random automotive shop or machine shop or anything like that. So in a real pinch, this could save you. Uh, the kind of infamous NEMA 1450. This used to be included with Teslas, but is no longer. This is probably the most common 240 volt outlet you'll find. Traditionally used for uh, RVs as well as uh, household electric ranges. So this is what a lot of people use for charging at home. I used to have this in my home in Minneapolis, but I use a 1430 now in Arizona. Uh, J1772 adapter. So this is used for non-Tesla charging stations. Uh, level 2, 240 volts, so not DC fast charging. This will be like charging at home speeds. So that's the Tesla end, J1772 adapter. This is the plug that any non-Tesla would have on the vehicle. And of course the Gen 2 UMC that goes along with all of those adapters. Set this off to the side here. So we have another charging bag here. So this is a NEMA 520 to 515 adapter. So this allows me to use this 520 plug that I have here, 
Tesla adapter and actually use it on a 515 outlet if I verified that that outlet is on a 20 amp circuit. So with this, it's designed for 20 amps and typically you'll find this 520 plug uh, in commercial settings, but you won't typically find that in residential settings. However, most new building code requires that garage outlets be on a 20 amp GFCI breaker. So you should be fine using this with this to pull 16 amps continuous on a 20 amp breaker if you verified the wiring and breaker are adequate. I also keep a TT30 to 1450 adapter. So this is very common at campgrounds. I bought this for like $7 on Amazon. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have bought it. Uh, it was on warehouse deals. Figure it's good to have. So that is actually uh, 30 amp 120 volts. So you can pull 24 amps continuous on 110 volt or 110, 120 volt. And this could save you in a pinch. You do have to manually set the amps with this being that it's using the 1450 plug. So the car will default to 32 amps, that will not work. Uh, here I have a 50 foot, uh, just 110 volt extension cord. You never know when you might need that. Uh, that's for if I'm really in a pinch or if I'm staying somewhere for a long time, can allow me to get some charge, especially like if I'm in a pretty remote area. Uh, I've got some just work gloves. You never know if you might need to lift something dirty, want to keep your hands clean. Uh, another set of work gloves. Here we have the Tesla Chatamo adapter. So we've got the Tesla end here. We've got the Chatamo end there. Uh, this allows you to use Electrify America stations, Evgo stations, charge point stations, uh, all sorts of third party DC fast charging networks. We're actually at the Arizona Mills parking lot right now and there is the Electrify America station. So that's where I previously used this adapter. It is $450. Uh, it's not necessary, I'd say, for just about everyone. However, if you drive a lot like I do, uh, it can be a really good plan C option. So I would say generally plan A are superchargers when I'm on the road, plan B are destination chargers with planning, of course. Uh, and then Chatamo is kind of, if it's available and it's there, and sometimes uh, it can actually be a lot faster to use Chatamo, being that sometimes their location can be a bit more convenient than Tesla superchargers, just being that there are more of them. So for me, if I have to choose between paying $10, $15, whatever, to use a Chatamo station, it saves me an hour of driving, say if I had to go into a downtown area and then back out on a road trip, that's well worth it to me to be able to save that time, even though I'm having to pay for charging when I do have free unlimited supercharging on my Model S. All right, let's get back into what's in the trunk. I've got some masking tape here that can come in handy for all sorts of different things. Uh, I have an avalanche shovel. So no, I'm probably not gonna encounter, encounter an avalanche in Arizona, but this can still come in handy for dirt, sand, uh, mud, gravel, whatever. You never know when you might need it. It takes up hardly any space. It's good to have. Uh, another roll of paper towels, it's good to have. So these are kind of uh, mud tracks or snow tracks. These actually saved someone when I was out near Tortilla Flat. I'll show a video of that. Uh, there was this Iowan that got stuck. He was not paying attention and kind of drove off a small cliff in his minivan. This allowed me to help him kind of drive back up over that ramp and minimize damage to his car. So I'll show you guys that. Um, I originally had this for Minnesota with snow and ice and all that, but I'm still keeping this in my car even in Arizona because you never know. All right, next up we have a 12 volt uh, air compressor here. So this is for filling tires. It's got a hose here. This is a pretty high power one. It can actually hook up directly to a 12 volt battery if needed. This is how I fill my tires. It's good on the side of the road if needed. And it's a great complement to the tire plug kit that I have here as well. So if you get a nail puncture, anything like that, small punctures that can kind of leave you stranded. This obviously won't help you if you have a blowout, but it's definitely better than nothing and can 
definitely help keep you on the road for a road trip rather than having to rely on others or late at night, Sundays, holidays, anything like that. All right, to go along with that compressor, um, being that I do have some performance driving background, I do have a long acre tire pressure gauge. This is a lot more accurate than just about any other tire gauge on the market. So with the 12 volt compressor, I'll usually overfill my tires and then I'll adjust them down to have them nice and even uh, with this, because you can use this and adjust them all the way down to a 10th of a PSI. And I personally like having my dash display match up uh, for all four tires, otherwise it drives me nuts. Uh, here we have just a standard moving blanket, can come in handy for uh, protecting the interior of your car. I've also got a small tarp there. Uh, both of those are good if you need to haul any large objects. I've got some hockey pucks here. That's kind of a last ditch uh, resort if I need someone to help jack up my car so that will protect the lift points of the vehicle. Here we've got an ice scraper that attaches to this uh, Snow Joe uh, snow brush thing. So that's good in the winter. Probably not necessary to keep in my car anymore in Arizona, but Nonetheless, this is the best option for clearing snow off of your car if you're in a cold climate that gets a lot of snow. Uh, having this foam rather than a brush helps protect your paint. So that's a lot better for your paint than a brush that's just constantly scratching it up. So that's kind of a wrap up of what I keep in the trunk. I'm gonna put that stuff back away and then we'll move into the interior. All right, I've got the trunk all put back together. Let's get that shut. Let's hop into the passenger side here first. I'll show you guys the glove box and then we'll move over to the driver's side and I'll show you guys come at some of the stuff in the center console, yacht floor area, uh, as well as the uh, back seat. All right, here we have the glove box, nothing too crazy. I've got some extra sunglasses in here. Uh, I have a J1772 adapter, a folding flashlight, comes in handy. Uh, some extra fuses, an extra USB to lightning cable for my phone, uh, vehicle registration. I've got two Tesla caching cars that I will put out at some point. Uh, some napkins, comes in handy if you ever eat in your car. Another Tesla caching car. Uh, a square chip NFC reader, a little disinfectant wipe, and that is all that I keep in my glove box. Nothing crazy there. Let's get that shut. Let's move into the back seat here. Also, nothing too crazy. Uh, so normally I wouldn't keep disinfectant wipes this handy. Normally this would be in the back, but uh, given the world situation, these are pretty handy to have uh, within reaching distance of the front seat. We've got two extra water bottles. Uh, and then that's actually my DJI uh, Osmo Mobile in that case. So that can come in handy for handheld videos. Uh, when the world isn't in a pandemic, I also drive Lyft occasionally. So I have uh, two USB cable sets here. So these are kind of designed for rideshare. I've got USB-C or two USB-Cs on each. Oh wait, no, uh, micro USB, USB-C, and then two Lightnings on each. Uh, that can also come in handy for my own devices because I have a lot of devices that I charge on a regular basis. Uh, and then that's actually just a little hook designed for Christmas lights on a house that I attach to the console here so that they're not just dangling about. Let's move into the front seat to the driver cockpit area. All right, let's get to the most important part of any car, which is where the driver sits. So obviously the Tesla Model S is kind of designed around the driver. We've got the instrument there, the MCU there. Uh, I also have my additional tablet here. Uh, that's primarily for scan my Tesla. Here you can see me recording. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can make a video kind of going over some of the different stuff that this can do. Uh, put it down below if you're interested in that, and I can certainly put something together on that front. Um, yeah, that's my Nexus 7 tablet. I also have a ROAV dash cam. So this is a 2015 Model S. It has Autopilot 1 hardware. So it's not capable of the built-in dash cam like the newer cars are. Uh, this is my Escort 9500iX radar detector. All right, moving on from the gadgets up there. Uh, down here we have my pack of baby wipes. Those are very handy for uh, small messes, 
my hands, face. All right, moving on from up here. Uh, down here, we've got some baby wipes. Those are handy for small messes. Um, if you're eating your car, anything like that, or your hands, face, anything. Uh, I've got a little change container here. Never know when you might have some change. I don't like it rattling all about. Uh, ibuprofen, handy to have in a car for headaches, anything like that. Some lens cleaner. So this is for cleaning the MCU screen, my phone screen, iPad, anything like that. I have Dubs earplugs, so those can be handy if I need to take a nap in my car. Um, pen, Sharpie, water bottle. Here we have kind of my power distribution. So that's my smart cord for the radar detector, uh, USB for various things. So I've got two different lightning cables, one for my phone, one that's extra for iPad or anyone else that's in the car. Um, I've got USB going to the Nexus 7 uh, and just various USB outputs here. My iPad Pro 11 inch, I don't go anywhere without this. This is probably my lifeline of sorts. I use this for editing photos. I use this for editing video in LumaFusion. So every video you've seen on my YouTube has been edited with this. Um, Costco microfiber up here for cleaning the screen, my phone, sunglasses, anything like that. I'll change that out as needed. Got some water bottles here. Uh, I like keeping gum in the car. It's good for on a road trip if you got kind of a nasty breath or bad taste in your mouth. Uh, also is good for cleaning your teeth and appetite. Hand sanitizer, three chapsticks for whatever reason. Uh, keys for various things. Uh, handcuff key, you never know when you might need that. Um, Swiss army knife, some access things. Yeah. Uh, this is where the that power supply is powered right there. These are the two USBs that are going to the uh, cables in the back. And that's pretty much it. So I'm really hoping you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, anything that you keep in your car that you think is critical, that you think I should have in my car also, um, are there any things that you add when you're on a road trip versus when you're on just normal daily driving? For me, I keep all these things in my car, whether I'm going on a road trip or whether I'm just driving around the city for normal use. But sometimes I will add a couple things if I'm on a road trip. Obviously, I'll have like snacks and uh, extra clothes, things like that. But beyond that, this is pretty much my go-to for everyday use. And my everyday use is far beyond what most people's is. And my daily use is borderline road trip for most people. Forgot to mention one thing, I do have the 3D Max Spider mats in my car. They are fantastic. I actually just cleaned them up last night. Um, these have been used now for 40,000 miles, including through a Minnesota winter with salt and dirt and everything like that. So I just cleaned them with some dish soap. I scrubbed them off in my bathtub. And then I used some 303 aerospace protectant to kind of give them a little bit of a better finish, a little bit of a shine, and also protect them from UV and from water and everything. So need to clean my pedals. Those are looking kind of gross compared to the uh, mats now. My Allbirds, I need to clean those up also. But anyway, I love these 3D Max Spider mats. They're so much better than WeatherTech in my opinion. They fit better, they clean up better, and they just look better. Uh, highly recommend them. They have them for lots of different cars, including every Tesla model. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, hopefully you learned a thing or two, or maybe you're going to add some things to your car when you go on road trips or just for your daily use. Um, if you found this helpful, please hit that like button down below. If you want to see future content, follow along on my journeys, uh, hit that subscribe button as well as the bell next to it. That way you're notified whenever I come out with a new video. Pretty soon I'm going to be having a video going over my ownership experience over the last year, uh, as well as what it's like to own a Model S with 150,000 miles. So be on the lookout for that. And if you subscribe and hit that bell icon, you'll be notified as soon as it's up. Again, thank you guys for watching. This is Brandon Flash.